Hello and welcome to The Main Cave. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a product which I've been pleasantly surprised by. One which I bought from Amazon last year and I've used on all of my videos across all of my channels every week. So here it is then, this is the Torbox Elite. Now essentially, it's a pad full of buttons and dials which replaces your keyboard, but it does way more than that. So watch on as I go through the unboxing, the price, the first look and feel, all the buttons and dials, connections, software, and whether I think this is worth it. So this particular version is the Elite, but I'll go over the other variations in a bit. And it's been out a while and I feel like I've wasted my time in getting this as it is superb. I really should have bought this last year to help me with my editing. So the unboxing then, it's a simple affair. The content is some paperwork and the Toolbox Elite itself underneath, and that's it. As I mentioned, this is the Elite version, which means it is a Bluetooth capable. Its RRP is £239 or around $270, but the whole time I had it on my Amazon wish list, there was a 20% off voucher. So assume the real price you should really pay is always around £190 or $215. There is also a wired variant called the Neo, and that comes with a cable within the box, and that's a lot cheaper at around £70 or $100 less, which includes the same 20% discount. But the major differences between the two is that the cheaper Neo doesn't have haptics and it is wired. Now in the box for the Elite version, there is no cable included, but for £20 more, you can get a case and a cable, but to be honest, it's just a USB-C. And as you'll see in a bit, there's no real need for a cable. So I understand the decision for them not to put one in for this version. Every variant of the tour box comes in black, but the Elite also comes in a white and a translucent, but I went for white to help with my dark desk space. It says in the spec that it's coated to be fingerprint proof, which feels about right, but not sure whether or not this will get dirty or not over the coming months with daily use. And as you hold the tour box, you can't help but be impressed with the quality. The weight is a big part of this. It weighs 425 grams and all of the buttons and the dials feel excellent quality with only a slight amount of movement on each. It feels like a tactile plastic all over with the buttons being of similar in feel. On the top of the various size buttons and three dials, these are perfectly placed for what you'd need. The large one for kind of scrolling left and right, the vertical one for up and down and the flat one for anything else that you'd need. I will go over exactly how I use these on later in the video. On the back is the USB-C port for when you want to plug it in, which for me is never. And on the bottom is four rubberized feet which help it stick to the desk. Also, there's an on-off switch with highlighted green and red. And above that is the pair button, which also acts as the device switch for when you want to move to another PC. And next to that is the battery compartment. It takes two double A's and they are supplied. They say that they will last about two months. So I'm probably nearly at the end of the life for these and I'll replace these probably with some rechargeable inner loops. So I can imagine it lasting a lot longer than two months. The buttons on the top have two kind of types of clicks. One is the single click you'd expect to find on say any TV remote or any home console controller. And the other is a double kind of snap, which is much more feedback given. The dials are smooth, but you can change this as within the software, you can set levels of haptic feedback. When reading the spec, I didn't think this was really a killer feature, but boy, was I wrong. The haptics are superb. I have it on the high level and it generally feels like a mechanical clicky wheel. It is perfect. And when using it on Bluetooth, there is no lag whatsoever. Buttons are precise, scrolling is definite. It's a joy to use and at no point did I get frustrated that I wasn't doing exactly what I expected it to do. All the buttons are in a decent place with enough difference between them all to know exactly the button you are pressing without having to look down. And it can be controlled without looking. And for my time using it, I've started to think that this has huge potential in the accessibility market. So as mentioned, the dials have haptics and these can be adjusted, which leads me nicely onto the software. But before I talk too much about the software, I'm not going to be going into every fine detail about setting up every program. This program can do so much, it's worth a separate video and maybe even a tutorial series. There is so much depth to it. If that's something you want, then do let me know down in the comments below. So initially setting it up is easy. You just turn it on, open up the Toolbox console app and it almost connects immediately. The Toolbox console is Mac and PC compatible. And when running, you'll notice it sits in the background and the taskbar, so it's very discreet. But when opening it up though, you may be a bit confused as it does take some time learning, but you do get the hang of it after a while. You can import presets if there is one available, or in the case of the DaVinci Resolve, there is currently three available, but I ignored these and I just set it up from fresh how I wanted to. 
I basically deleted everything that I didn't use and kept the one that I did use, the DaVinci Resolve, and created a blank preset for the other program I use, LumaFusion. I then spent a couple of hours going through my video editing software, writing down all the functions that I used regularly. Then it was a simple case of working out the keyboard shortcut for each function and adding it to the Toolbox console. For example, scrolling left and right in DaVinci is using the mouse scroll. There's a slow scroll and a fast scroll in the console. So I just made sure I had the fast scroll on the large dial and the slower scroll on the flat dial with the zoom on the vertical scroll. It worked brilliant. I also found I was switching between blade and action tool a lot and these got defined onto two smaller buttons with an easy reach. I repeated this for every function I used and with an hour or so, I had it all set up. When setting a dial or a button press, you have access to various built-in functions for Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere, etc. But you can also add in mouse functions and even system functions such as PC volume control or music play and pause. So LumaFusion was the same process, but instead of tweaking already set commands, I'd add my own from scratch. And this worked perfectly well. Then once I'd set them all up, all you need to do is link the preset to the corresponding app. And then whenever you have that app active, the Toolbox uses that preset. It's all very seamless. There's also an on-screen HUD if you need it, but I instantly turned this off as it got in the way far too much. So it's, as a test though, I thought I'd try random programs I had, such as Twitter on Tweetbot, for example. This worked well, just set up scrolling up and down on the dial, link the app and it works. So as you can imagine, you can get really creative in how you can use this. And don't think that it's exclusively for editing videos and photos, albeit that's its main function. For the first couple of weeks, I left it at that and I was using it as a shortcut pad and it worked great. But once I was more comfortable with it, I then started to add more layers of complexity. Within the software, you can also set macros, so you can be forming many actions repeatedly. These can be set up to accommodate that. It also has menus for each button press, repeat presses, delayed presses. Seriously, this is why the Toolbox Control app deserves its own video series, as there is so much to it. You will not wanting more for it to do much else. So once you have it set up, then it's just a simple case of turning it on, opening up the program, and then flying around that software with your Toolbox set up. So is it worth the price that I paid then? Absolutely, yes it is, and I wish I'd bought this sooner. If you can afford it, go for the Elite, as the haptics is sweet and it makes for a clean setup with no cables. But if price is an issue, then the Neo will get the job done. I've had a very productive time using the Toolbox and will continue to use this when editing and maybe some other applications when I can think of it creatively. It could be seen as a keyboard alternative and to a certain extent that's what it emulates, but there is much more to it with the accessibility functions, multi-level programming, and above all else, its ability to help you speed up your workflow. Okay, so that was my look at the Toolbox Elite. Do let me know if you've got any questions below. Do like, do subscribe, and until the next video, bye-bye.